Hello and welcome to this series of videos where we take a close look at compression, one of the most versatile tools in music production. At a very simple level, a compressor is an automatic volume control, reducing the difference between the loudest and quietest parts of a sound. For example, if you have a vocal recording where the volume fluctuates throughout, a compressor can help you make that sound more uniform across the whole track, making it consistently audible across the mix. They can also be used to process and shape sounds as an effect or as a tool to help glue the mix together. Compressors come in both hardware and software forms, but they all have the same core controls. Threshold, ratio, attack and release. That said, these different controls can be a bit tricky to get your head around. So in this series, we're gonna look at how a compressor works and show you some real world examples of how to apply it to your music. One of the first controls you will use on a compressor is the threshold. The threshold control sets the level at which the compressor starts to activate. When the incoming signal level passes above the threshold, the compressor will engage. For example, if I set the threshold at minus 6 dB, once the level of the incoming signal passes minus 6 dB, the compression will begin. Let's have a look at the waveform of this drum track. We can see that the kick and snare in the waveform are the loudest parts of the sound. These short peaks are known as transients. If we add the compressor to the drum track and press play, we can move the threshold down until it starts to reduce the volume of the transients. The lower the threshold, the more the sound will be compressed. The level of the sound has now become more uniform. The level the signal has been reduced by is called gain reduction. Most compressors will have a meter showing how much the gain has been reduced. Let's have a look at the difference that is made to the waveform. Here's the uncompressed waveform, and here's the compressed waveform. Worth noting at this point is the makeup button, which will automatically turn the output gain up to compensate for any overall decrease in volume of the track due to compression. You might find this is automatically turned on on some compressors, so you might want to turn this off as you apply your compression, then activate it again to check that the final level sits well within your mix, making adjustments on the output level if it starts to peak. Some compressors also have a makeup gain control knob. Let's have a look at how that changes our waveforms. Here's the uncompressed waveform, the compressed waveform, and the compressed waveform with makeup gain. The ratio control is used to choose how much compression will be added to the sound once it goes beyond the threshold. This is always represented by a ratio, for example, two to one. The larger the first number, the more compression will be added. For example, if you have a ratio of 2 to 1, if the signal goes over the threshold by 2 dB, only 1 dB of that signal will be allowed to pass through. If it goes over the threshold by 4 dB, then 2 dB will be allowed to pass through, and so on. The louder parts of the signal will now be quieter. Let's look at an example. The compressor on our drum loop has a threshold of minus 10 dB, which is below the main transients. So it will turn it down as it passes through the compressor. If we set the ratio to two to one, it'll be much more gentle compression. But if we set the ratio to 10 to one, the compression will be much more impactful, potentially flattening all the dynamics. Always bear in mind that the more compression you apply, the less dynamics the sound will have. So be careful not to overdo it and squash the life out of your sounds. For the most part, an effective application of compression will control the transients, but leave some of the dynamics in place. Attack time is how quickly the compressor activates after it passes the threshold. The quicker the attack time, the quicker it will begin compression. A quick attack time can be really useful if you want to control sounds with large transients like drum hits, whereas you may want a slower attack time if you want to let some of those transients through. Release time is how quickly the level returns to zero compression once it drops below the threshold. The longer the release time, the longer it takes for the volume to return to its pre-compressed level. Some compressors have an auto release button which changes the release time depending on the type of transient. The more extreme the transient, the quicker the release and vice versa. 
It's standard to find peak and RMS settings in each compressor, and most have the ability to switch between the two. But what's the difference between the two modes? Basically, it's two different ways that the compressor listens to the incoming signal. Peak means the compressor will act based on the transient peaks within the audio signal. Whereas RMS is based on the average sound level of the incoming signal. The compressor will only kick in if the average sound level goes beyond the threshold for a certain period of time. RMS is better for general levelling of tracks or overall mixes, helping to smooth out the differences between the louder and quieter parts, whereas peak is used for catching and reducing transients. Our final control is knee, which is used to control how much compression is applied as the signal approaches the threshold. A 0 dB or hard knee means that no compression will be applied until the threshold has been reached. The more you increase the knee, the more it'll gradually apply compression as the signal approaches the threshold. Hard knee will give you a more aggressive style of compression, whereas a softer knee will result in a more transparent or smoother feel. Sidechain compression is one of the most used effects in electronic music production and one of the easiest to recognise. Basically, sidechain compression is when the compressor on one track is triggered not by the level of that track, but by the level of another track. The classic example is when the compression on a synth sound is activated by the level of the kick drum. So here in Ableton, we have a track with a synth pad on it and a track with a kick drum on it. If we drop a compressor onto the synth track, we can open up the sidechain section. We can turn on the sidechain and then use the drop down menu to choose what channel we want to receive volume information from. In this case, we can select the kick. Now, if we pull the threshold below the kick volume, we can hear the compression kick in on the synth, giving us that familiar pumping sound. You can use sidechain compression to create an obvious effect like this, or use it in a more subtle way, like applying it to a bass track to allow the kick drum to punch through the bottom end of the mix. It would be quite common for most electronic music producers to use some form of sidechain to allow that kick to really punch through in the mix. Sidechain compression can really help when a bass track and kick track are playing at the same time and occupy that same frequency space. When you sidechain the kick to the bass, it lowers the volume of the bass whenever the kick is playing, helping to reduce overloads of bass frequencies and create space in the lower end of your mix. Parallel compression is a technique that combines a dry version of a sound with a heavily compressed version of the same sound as a means to add depth and aggression. For example, here's a clean drum break with no effects. On the return track, I have a compressor and I'm going to turn the ratio up pretty high and the threshold down fairly low. This will create a sound on the return track that is highly compressed. So here's the drum track solo. And here's the compressed sound solo. And here are the two sounds blended together, creating a much more energetic sound. You can also use the volume control on your return track to gradually blend the compressed sound in until you get the required effect. Some compressors have a dry, wet mix knob enabling you to do parallel compression without the need for external routing. Just insert the compressor directly onto the channel you want to compress and use the mix knob to blend the dry signal with the compressed signal. So that's the main controls of a compressor explained. We're now going to hand over to Nate who's going to look at some real world examples of how you can use compressors within your music. Hey guys, welcome to the video. Uh, so before we carry on with some practical examples on compression, 
I want to just discuss different kinds of compressors. Uh, not all compressors are created equally, especially when you are talking about compressors in the analog realm. The varying components, uh, either in the detection phase or in the actual compression phase itself, can radically change the tone and response of the compressor as well as the application for that compressor. So typically picking a compressor, you're going to start off picking either a digital or an analog compressor. Uh, the digital ones are mostly quite predictable and surgical. They'll be applicable to pretty much anything across the board. But that said, they won't add any specific character or mojo or musicality to your audio. So you may want to be looking at an analog compressor instead. If you're picking an analog compressor, you're typically going to be concerned with four different kinds, namely VCA, FET, Opto and tubes. Uh, we're going to look at the VCA and FET very briefly first. VCA, basically the names come from components inside of the compressors. So VCA coming from a voltage controlled amplifier, FET coming from field effect transmitter. So a VCA typical examples are going to be the SSL G series bus compressor, uh, the Vertigo VSC2 or something like the DBX160. They're typically going to be pretty fast acting compressors. Uh, very snappy and quite often your go-to compression for parallel compression, bus compression and drum and percussion buses in particular. Uh, the FET as well, these are very similar to the VCA ones. They also are pretty snappy, pretty quick response to your audio. Again, they're great on drum buses. A uh, classic example of this would be the 116 limiting amplifier or compressor. Moving on to Opto. Uh, so Opto comes from optical compressors. So in the detective phase, when it's reading the audio and determining what to compress, the internal circuitry of an Opto actually uses an LED light to detect the peaks and judge the gain reduction that is done after that. Without getting into too much of the technical side of it, it does result in a bit of latency in the compression and typically has a smoother, more rounded uh, behavior and thus it's used on vocals quite often. A very good example of this is the LA-2A, classic compressor used in countless records for vocal tracks. Uh, another good place to use this would be on a bass channel, for example, as it doesn't tend to squash the lows as quickly as a VCA or FET would quite often. So tube compressors, uh, quite often you'll also see the terminology Verimu or Dynamu or, and so on. Um, or MU compressors. Uh, so the tubes, essentially, it, it is what the name implies. They consist of tubes inside of the circuitry. Uh, good examples of this would be the Fairchild compressor, Manley's Verimu compressor, uh, also something like SPL's Iron, also a tube compressor. And these are, again, similar to opto compressors whereby they're a lot more smooth, a lot more musical. They work fantastically as levelers as well, whereby you're not controlling peaks so much as or, uh, so much as you're controlling the overall level of something. These can work great on buses and overall mixes as well, like I said, to control leveling rather than just controlling small peaks. They're also fantastic on vocals and a number of other applications as well. Furthermore, a couple of other terms that you're going to see, we're not going to cover them in detail. Feed forward, feed backwards. It's another form of circuitry used in compressors, which I'm not going to get into too much detail with. You'll also probably come across uh, multiband compressors. We'll cover this in a subsequent video as well, but that's essentially compressors that are focused on a small uh, area of the frequency band, all with independent settings. So you can have a compressor for the lows, the mids and the highs. Uh, furthermore, there is spectral compression, which we're not going to cover too much, but that's essentially the same as multiband compression. However, you are technically talking about hundreds of bands rather than three or four like you would in a normal multiband compressor. And lastly, uh, you'll come across limiters quite often. They're used a lot in tracks. A limiter is essentially just a compressor with a really, really high ratio, which results in audio being basically cut off very sharply when it passes the threshold. Essentially anything like a 100 to 1 uh, ratio and in excess of that. Cool, so that covers the basics. Uh, we're gonna dive into some examples showing you how to use some of these compressors now. I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video, then smash a like. And if you wanna be notified about new videos, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. Peace!